In this video, we're going to explore the basics of building a chart. So in order to actually build something, we're going to work towards the goal of creating this chart in the top left. Now I'm going to build this without the styling for this video, just to show the basics of how to put together the chart. But there will be a follow-up video in terms of actually styling this and making it look pretty close to the chart that you're seeing here. So first of all, what are you looking at? Uh, this is an EBITDA by department chart. And what that is, it stands for Earnings Before Interest, Taxes, Depreciation, and Amortization. Basically, it's a financial performance metric. So, it's pretty simple. We have two series, one for target, and one for the actual value that we want to show. And then, of course, we're grouping them by the various departments. So, it's pretty easy. So, let's go over to Dundas SBI. And I'm going to start by going to the Explore tab. And you'll see that I've already expanded out my data connector that connects to the data for this chart. So there's really two tables here that we need to work with. I'm going to start with the daily EBITDA table. I'm going to drag that first one onto the dashboard. That will create what we call a metric set. And if I open the binding panel here, you'll see that that first measure is included. Now I also want to see target. So let's drag that on as a secondary measure. And then, of course, the last thing I want to do is group this by something. So I could drag department ID on here. Do you see that? And it'll just show the ID number for each one of these. Now, that's not very readable uh, for humans. We don't care about the number. We want the actual name. So let's remove that and actually go down to the departments table that we have here. You'll see that these tables are, in fact, related. I've got the department ID in this one, followed by the department ID in the other table. So because of this relationship, there's nothing wrong with me taking department name and dragging it into rows. And you'll see now it's actually grouping the data properly. So in terms of that chart that I just showed you, this is the exact structure. And everything else just comes down to tweaking the settings a little bit. So let's start by actually changing this to a bar chart. And one thing that you'll see is the numbers are quite a bit different here. So somehow I'm in the millions here, where the chart I was showing you was in the hundreds of thousands. And the reason for that is the previous chart was filtered. This one isn't yet. This is showing all of the different areas in one go. So opening up the data binding panel, let's actually take the store ID. I'm going to make that a slicer. So think of a slicer as a filter for your visualization. By adding that slicer into this, you'll see that basically nothing happened because right now we're just telling it, show everybody. But if I open up the options for the slicer and then the parameter value, you'll see all the different store numbers that are available. So that first chart that I was showing you was using store one. So if I select that, you'll see now that we have the correct data. The next thing that you'll notice is that chart is sorted. So from lowest to highest. So in order to do that, I just click on the chart, go back to the binding panel, and I'm going to open the measure for which I want to sort by. So just click on the actual area here, and then it's just a matter of finding the custom sort option from the properties that are available to you. So clicking here, and telling it which way you want to sort. So in my case, ascending. That's all I need to do. Say OK, and you'll see it's now sorted. Now this is pretty much the exact chart that was being shown in that example. So the only difference is really an issue of styling, which we are going to cover in the next video. So hopefully this will give you a starting point for building simple charts.